Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. First of all, a great big thank you to everyone that emailed me some aerial photos of deserted places that I asked for last month. I got a tremendous response, it was really cool, but I actually got too many, and so what I did is I chose 51 of my favorites and I made a little slideshow with them. Something that can be viewed in the future to look back on and remember the impact that these days had on our world. Hopefully this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to capture some aerial images that we otherwise wouldn't be able to. So I just posted that video on my channel. I'll link it down in the description below. Also, it's gonna be right up here. This video is gonna be a tutorial on how I made that slideshow. So let's get to it. Hey, thanks for being here again, everyone. Nice to have you back to the channel. I hope you are all tolerating these days. Now you all captured some great storytelling shots and I really do appreciate you sharing them for this project. Today, what I'd like to do is show you how I used Adobe Premiere Pro to create that slideshow. And before you comment down below, I do understand there are many other programs out there like DaVinci Resolve. Uh, I get about 20 comments every time I post a tutorial like this about DaVinci Resolve. I prefer Adobe Premiere Pro because it's powerful when you need power, and it can also be used to create simple projects like this one. Now, one more thing, some of the photo submissions contained your social media information, and some of them didn't. Some of you forgot to, or maybe I didn't tell you, but uh, what I did is I didn't put those on the photos just because I didn't want the photos to get too cluttered on the slideshow. What I invite you to do is, if I used one of your images in that slideshow, feel free to go there and promote yourself down in the comments. Put your Instagram or your YouTube or your Facebook information, anything like that, and I'm gonna allow any links in the comments, so go crazy promoting yourself. I really do appreciate it. Again, not on this video, but on the slideshow video. I have each photo numbered as well as your first name on them, so be sure in the comments to tell us which numbered photo is yours. For this project, I wanted to keep things as simple as possible because my goal of this tutorial is for those of you who don't know how to make a slideshow or you've never made one before to be able to make one without too much struggle. So the first thing that I did is I chose my 51 favorites and I put them all into one folder. And then I went ahead and opened up Adobe Premiere Pro and I started a new project. Now when Premiere Pro opens up, it's gonna look like this or very similar to this and it's kinda intimidating at first, but it's really not after you use it just a few times. The first thing that you need to do is import the images into your project. So all you have to do is click on file and import and go to the folder where you have your images stored and then import them into Adobe Premiere Pro. Next, I created what is called a sequence. Now a sequence is basically kind of like the canvas that you're gonna be placing and arranging your artwork on. You set the size of that canvas and then you start making your masterpiece, so to speak. So I made this project a 1920 by 1080, which is full HD. And the reason that I did that is because some of the images that you all sent me were lower resolution. Some of the images were medium and some of them were really, really big resolution. So what I did is I kind of went down the middle and I chose HD because then some of those lower resolution photos aren't going to be all pixelated and some of the higher resolution images will look great at full HD. Once I got that done, the next step was to set the duration of how long each photo was going to be on the screen. You know, the default on Adobe Premiere Pro is five seconds and I wanted it to be a little bit longer than that just so you know, people had enough time to kind of soak in each image. And so I wanted it to be about seven seconds. And so to do that, you just go to edit, go to preferences, and then go down to timeline, and then make sure that it's set to seven second duration. The next step is to simply highlight all of the images here. And then to do that, you just click on the first one, hold down the shift key, click on the last one, and then you drag them all over to the timeline to make that sequence. So like I said, the more complicated things are, the harder they are to manage. And that brings me to today's sponsor. That's right, I have a sponsor for this video. For almost two years, I've turned down all sponsorship offers because I really didn't feel comfortable promoting something that I didn't know anything about. But when Ridge Wallets contacted me, it was a pretty easy decision because it's a product that I've actually been using for a while. All of my adult life, I've used one of these leather back-breaking George Costanza type wallets. But after a fellow drone YouTuber, Original Dobo, told me that he loved his Ridge, I was convinced to finally get one. And I, like Ken, instantly loved the minimalist everyday carry. 
But then this winter, like Sakakawea thought she needed my new titanium wallet more than I did. I actually dropped it into an ice hole. So I went back to the old bulky mini suitcase and before I had a chance to get a new Ridge, they emailed me and asked if I'd be willing to partner with them. Seriously, best wallet ever in my opinion, and I did do some research before I bought my first Ridge. With these two metal plates that are expandable by durable elastic, they hold up to 12 cards. They have a lifetime warranty and free returns. They have a dozen styles and colors. They come in titanium, aluminum, and carbon fiber, and it truly will be the last wallet that I ever buy unless some ice hole takes this one too. Use the link in the description for 10% off your purchase and free worldwide shipping when you enter the discount code 51drones at checkout. So now that the images are on the timeline, the next order of business is to add a little bit of motion to each of them. This can be a little time consuming, but just adding a little bit of motion helps draw the viewer into the image. One challenging thing about this project is that I had so many different sizes to deal with. If they were all the same size, I could simply set a keyframe at the beginning of one image and then set a keyframe at the end for a little bit bigger, like 6% is what I chose. I could copy that one, highlight all of the other images, and then paste attributes, click on motion, and be done with it. But because these are all different sizes, I needed to actually set the keyframes for each photo. When I got done, I realized there were actually only five different resolutions, so I only needed to set the motion for one photo of that size, and then I copied it and pasted it to the other images of that same size. So here's what it looks like with a little bit of motion added. It looks better, right? For some reason, it just makes it better. So the next thing that I wanted to do is add a little transition in between each of the images. Now transitions have become quite a thing lately. So many people get hung up on having these amazingly complicated transitions. Problem is that most viewers don't care about how cool the transitions are. They care about the story. And so transitions can be a vital component of a project, but they should complement the story, they shouldn't distract from it. So in this case, we have kind of a somber story. So a simple fade or a dissolve effect or something like that is all I needed. Straight cuts are just too harsh for the mood and I didn't want anything complicated either. So I actually chose cross dissolve. And to do that, I went to the effects panel. I clicked on video transitions. I clicked on uh, cross dissolve. I right clicked on it, set that as the default transition. And then I highlight all of the images and then click on shift D, and then all of the photos had that transition. Next, I added a simple dip to black at the beginning and then dip to black at the end, and then I moved on to the next step. The next step was actually the most time consuming part of this project, and that was to label each photo. I wanted to put a small identifier in the lower left-hand corner of each photo to tell the viewer who took that photo and where it was taken. So all I did was click on the text tool, I clicked on the image, and then I typed out the information for that first image. Once I got it positioned to where I wanted it to be, all I had to do was copy that one and then paste it on each additional photo. That way I know it's in the same spot for each one. Then I went through and I changed the information to match each individual photo. After doing that, the final step and the most important step was to add music to the project. I consider music as kind of like the paintbrush of your art. You know, you can throw down a bunch of photos or images or video. You can craft a story with it. You can add some effects. You can do some color grading and all of that. But if you don't have music, it's kind of like your finger painting. You know, music is the most important part of the viewer's experience. And so I headed over to Epidemic Sound. That's where I get all of my royalty free music. And I searched for a song that was, you know, kind of beautiful, an instrumental song that would kind of fit the mood that I was trying to get across with this project. After about 15 minutes of searching, I found the perfect song, but it was just a little bit too long. I had about six minutes of slideshow, but the music was a little bit longer than that and it would be almost impossible to go through and adjust each photo duration to match up the music perfectly. And so what I did is I figured out a little bit of a hack. It's not really a hack, it's actually commonly used. I used what's called nesting. All I had to do was highlight all of the images, right click on them, and then nest them. And I'll tell you what nesting is here in just a second, but what I did is then I used the rate adjustment tool and I dragged the duration of that entire project to match up to the music. So if you don't know what nesting is, basically it's a way of taking multiple pieces of a project and putting them into one clip. Then you can make adjustments to that single clip and make edits to that single clip and it affects every single item in that nested sequence. I hope that makes sense, but 
It's one of the reasons that I love and use Adobe Premiere Pro because it's really a big time saver. You know, instead of having to go through and adjust the duration of each individual photo, I could just put them all together and then stretch it out so they fit the music. The very final thing I did was add a little bit of text at the beginning and then add a little bit of text at the end. Then I went up to file, export, you save it to your hard drive and let it do its thing. Then I uploaded it to YouTube so you could enjoy it. If you have any questions about what I just showed you or anything at all about Adobe Premiere Pro, just let me know down in the comments. And if I don't have an answer to your question, I certainly can do my best to help you find the answer. I sincerely wanna thank you for watching the entire video today. Go ahead and click on that thumbs up button if I did give you anything of value. Be sure to subscribe for future videos if you're not already. Wash your hands for 20 seconds. A big thank you to Ridge for sponsoring today's video. A bigger thank you to those of you who helped contribute to this project. I really do appreciate it. Have a great day, everyone. And as always, fly safe and fly smart.